Hi, this is Theoretical Computer Science, section 3.3. We're going to go through some homework problems. Okay, so let me just say what this is all about. So, um, chapter 3 is about Turing machines. And we saw at Turing machines, what they do is they manipulate, they manipulate strings. You put a string on the tape, you have a tape, you put strings on the tape, and it changes the tape, and it does exactly what you want it to do. Okay, great. But, you know what? Computers do a lot more than just manipulate strings. They do a lot more than just changing strings, okay? They deal with games, they deal with uh, data structures, they deal with uh, numbers, they deal with a lot of other things, okay? So, we have to see how to encode other things as we encode, as, uh, I'm sorry, to encode other things into strings. Okay, now the book doesn't really have any good exercises on this, and I made up three exercises, it's on the chart, it's on the homework chart, and we'll go through it. The other thing about this is, there's no real exact answers here. There are different methods of doing things, and what we want to do is talk about these different methods of doing things. Okay, just to get a feel, and I'm sure anything that I say, you can think of a better way of doing things. Okay, so again, we don't only want to talk about strings, we want to encode other things as strings and then do that. Now we did this already, for example, the number five, we encoded as the string with five ones. Okay, so we encode numbers as strings. But what we're going to see is we're going to encode everything. Everything can be encoded as strings and then we can manipulate them. We can Im manipulate those strings and basically we're manipulating those structures. Okay, so let's do the first one. Given encoding of a graph, use the minimal amount of space. Now let's think of a graph. Okay, here's a typical graph. This is an, this is a undirected graph. We could talk about directed graphs also, but let's talk about an direct and graph. Now, how can we make from this into a, a pattern, into a string? Okay, so the first thing is, we're going to have to talk about what's connected to the what. This is connected to this. This is not connected to this. So we have to, what we have to do is we have to give names to these things. So let's give a name to them. One, two, three, four. Okay, so I'd like to write this as a string. And here's a nice way of doing it, okay? First, tell the, so let's call this graph G, and now we're going to encode G. First, tell the computer how many nodes there are. One, two, three, four, there are four nodes. Then, make a separation, okay? And now we want to know what the edges are. So, we can do it like follows. We can say, there's an edge from one, and we can make a symbol. What symbol can we make? Uh, no, let's just make a, an arrow. Maybe an arrow is a symbol. Let's just use that symbol. One to two. No, we don't want arrow. Ah, that's good. You ready? One dash two, comma, one dash three, comma, two dash three, and finally, two dash four. Okay? So this is, if you write this down, the semicolon is to separate anything, and then you write down all the edges with a dash in between. Now this is a totally, this is a legitimate way of describing a graph. If we write it in a computer, a computer can figure out different properties of the graph. In other words, think about it. A Turing machine can go over back and forth and tell how many nodes have an even number of things coming out of it? How many nodes have an odd? Let's see. This is even, this is even, this is odd, this is odd. Okay? So here's one way of doing it. Now, if you'll think about it, there are other ways of doing it, too. Okay? So, for example, think of this graph as a matrix. Okay? So here's the matrix. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so let's see. 1 is connected to 2. 1 is connected to 3. 1 is not connected to 1, and 1 is not connected to 4. 2 is connected to 1, 3, and 
4. 3 is connected to 1 and 2, not 3 and 4. And 4 is only connected... Oops. 4 is only connected to 2. Okay? Now that's not a string, that's a matrix. Notice also, this matrix is symmetric. That means whatever's on this side is on this side, because there's no direction here. But now we can think of writing this as the following. We can write this as a graph for the following. Okay? 0, comma, 1, comma, 1, comma, 0, semicolon. That's the first line. 1, comma, 0, comma, comma, 1, comma, 1, semicolon. That's the second line. 1, comma, 1, comma, 0, comma, 0. That's the third line. And finally, 0, comma, 1, comma, 0, comma, 0. That's the fourth line. Okay? So the graph can be encoded like that. Okay? Okay. Another theme that's constant in this coding is to be as somewhat, what's the word, um, as small as possible. Okay? To use as, as little, little language as possible. Somehow this, this is more efficient than this because this has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and this has 0, 1, I'm sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. This has 31 characters. This has 17 characters. But if you think about it, this, all this information, because it's a symmetric graph, all this information is extra. There's no loops. So all this extra inf information you don't really need. So maybe I can store it like this. You ready? G equals 1, comma, 1, comma, 0, semicolon, 1, comma, 1, semicolon, 0. Now this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. This is 11 vertices. 11 characters. That's better than 17. Okay? So that's very nice. Can you do better than this? Probably. Probably can. Okay? You can basically say, look, I have four vertices, and then somehow describe the vertices. One, two. One, three. Well, well you did that there. Okay. Okay, good. Let's do problem number two. Give a nice way to encode a labeled graph. A labeled graph is a graph where there's names over here. So we can put in names over here. Jack, Jill, John, I don't know, Bill. I have names. Okay. Question, how would we encode such a graph? Okay, and the answer is, that obviously there'll be a lot of answers, but here's a nice way of answering them. You ready? Start off with the graph can be, the labeled graph can be encoded with the number 4, and then you say, parentheses, 1, comma, jack, comma, 2, semicolon. So this says, there is an edge from 1 to 2, and his name is Jack. Okay, and you can go on. 1, whoops, parentheses, comma, Jill, comma, 3, semicolon, 2, comma, John, comma, 3, semicolon, okay, 2, comma, Bill, comma, Four. One, two, three, four. And that's it. Okay. Now, let's just go through this. Um, this is a little bit... Uh, so there's wasteful things here. For example, you don't need the open and close parentheses because you're going to separate them 
by semicolons. Okay, so that's a way of doing it. Okay, can you do it better? Probably. Can't think of any cleverer way than that. Um, but let's do it as a matrix. You might do this matrix as follows. Let's not do the whole matrix. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So let's do it. Two to one. Two to one. Let's leave this out. Okay, two to one, two to one is Jack. One to three, one to th two to one, two to one, three to one is Jill. One to two is Jack. One to three is Jill. One to four is Bill. No, that's two to four. Two to four is Bill. And two to three is John. Okay, and the rest are zero. So maybe you can do it like this. Jack, Jill, zero, semicolon. John, Bill, z semicolon, zero. Okay, that would be even smaller. Okay, so these are just, you don't have to write that because all this information is here. Of course, you can write that. And if I was talking about directed graphs, I would have to talk about that also. Okay, great. So that takes care of the second problem. Third problem, give a nice way to encode an NFA. How much space is used? So let's talk about NFAs. Okay, let's just remember the definition of an NFA. You have a set of states. You have the alphabet, you have the transition function, you have the starting state, a little less, starting state, and you have the accepting, the final states. Okay? Okay, so here's a cute way of doing it. Let's say this is equal to Q1, Q2, Q5. Let's say the state has 5. This has the letter A, B, C. This has the transition function. We're going to have to write out the transition function. Let's say the starting state is Q3, and the accepting state is Q1, Q3, and Q5. Okay, so how can we put all this information into a string? And the answer is, you could do it exactly like this. Okay, so the machine would be like this, and you do this, and you say, okay, um, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, Q5, close. Okay, next, what is the alphabet? A, B, C. Okay, next is hard. So we're going to put a comma, and I'm going to describe some of the things. So for example, we could have something like this. If you're in Q1, comma, and you see the letter A, comma, go to Q4. Put that in parentheses, comma. If you're in Q1, comma, and you see an A, comma, go to Q3, comma. Okay, it's non-determinism. You could have something like this. Okay, if you're in Q5. And you see the letter B. Go to Q2, semi uh, comma. Okay, and you're going to have a, a few more. These are the transitions. These are the main things. Then you'll have, you'll finish off. You'll have a semicolon, and then you'll say something like Q3, and then you'll have you want a semicolon because you're now doing this, and so you can write this as Q1 comma Q3 comma Q5. Okay, and now you finish. This is a string that describes a non-deterministic finite automaton. We're going to use these 
in chapter 4 because we're not only going to talk about numbers and we're not only going to talk about strings, we're going to talk about graphs, labeled graphs, and more important than that, we're going to talk about NFAs. We're going to have computers dealing with NFAs. We're going to have computers dealing with pushdown automatons. Ultimately, we're going to have computers dealing with computers. Okay, you know what? But we can fix this up a lot. Okay, We can make this a lot shorter. Let me explain to you why. The truth is, we don't really have to use the symbols 1 through 5. And if you think about the NFAs that I drew, I barely ever put names in them. Names are not important. So I can do the same graph like this, instead of going down, I'm going to go up, as follows. 5. I have three elements in my, I have five elements in my first set. That's it. I just have to say I have five elements. I don't care what the names are. That's not important. I have five elements. Next, I have three symbols in my alphabet. Three, semicolon. Again, the symbols don't really make a difference. Different languages have different symbols. We're talking about how complex they are. Different languages have different symbols. Next, the transition function. So watch. I can not have the parentheses again, and I can have something like this. One, comma, one, that's the first symbol, comma, three, sem, ooh, we have a semicolon, so let's, let's do this as a different symbol. Number sign, that separates the, separates the arrows. One, comma, one, comma, three, number sign. 5, comma, 2, the second symbol, comma, 2, number sign. Da, 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 da. Okay? Da, 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 da. Okay? And finally, i got to tell it what's the starting state. Sem after I finish putting in all the transition, I can say 3 is the accepting state. And then, semicolon, now I have to tell you what the, what the accept. So I can say 1, comma, 3, comma, 5. Those are the accepting states. Now, this looks particularly yucky to me, but I can program a computer to de... This is called um, encoding, to decode. Okay? And we can figure out properties of this NFA. And you can even imagine yourself taking this NFA and this string that represents an NFA and writing a Turing machine. We did it. We did it the first class. The second class, we changed an NFA to a DFA. Well, it's such a mechanical procedure that you can do it also. And so we can write a Turing machine that takes NFAs, the strings for an NFA, and outputs uh, DFAs, which we did the first week. And it's a very easy thing to do. Okay, so this is just some easy problems with no exact solutions, um, we just gave a few possible solutions of how you encode things. And they, again, the important thing is we want computers to be able to deal with a lot of different things. Not only just strings, but numbers, graphs, data structures, and finite automatons, push down automatons, and finally, we're going to want computers to talk about computers. Okay? And so they have to manipulate them like that. Okay, thank you.